It is time now for today's Talk Back segment. Each day we post a question on Court TV's social media pages. We gather your comments and questions and respond right here on the show. Today, a Massachusetts mother of three remains missing. Earlier today, CNN released a look at her husband's shocking search history. And records show he was looking up how to dismember and dispose of a body. And a body that weighed exactly the same amount as his wife. Okay, so what do you think of this new information and the evidence that seems to be stacking up against Brian Walsh? Still with me, trial and family law attorney Lexi Rigdon and criminal defense attorney uh, uh, David Bruno is with me as well. Again, he was a former prosecutor. Our first comment comes from Robin, guys, and Robin says, This is one in which I'm having a really hard time with innocent until proven guilty. And, I, and I'll tell you what, David, what probably helps in this case, uh, at least helps Roxy feel that way, is that this guy was already under house arrest for fraud charges involving some paintings that he had taken from a friend that ended up being fake and he was basically defrauding everybody and he was waiting sentencing so he was on house arrest so this guy's got uh, some moral issues as well i get it i get it i get the comment however um our constitution the fundamental rights that our country was founded on relies on this right and that is that our defendants are presumed innocent that the government has the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And that is the reason uh, that we have all of these principles because we would rather an innocent man go free than an than a innocent man be found guilty. And that's why the burden is so high and that's why those constitutional rights are there. All right, let's go to our next comment. It comes from Vincenzo. Vincenzo says the husband spent hundreds on cleaning supplies. He should just hold a neon sign that says guilty. Exactly, I mean, that's the one, Lexi, that, that gets me. But here's something I want to I check in with you on. Initially, I said to myself, well, why did he never call the police that his wife was missing? Well, supposedly, as far as he was concerned, the story he told police was that she was on her way to D.C. to do some work with a real estate company that she worked for. Um, so she goes away, and I know my wife goes away on business as well. Sometimes, uh, you know, we talk every night, but there's a period there where I'm not sure where she is, you know. But, you know, she's always texting me, I'm on the plane, we're taking off, we're doing all those things. I guess maybe this couple didn't do that, but it was the company that ultimately ended up calling to say they didn't know where she was. So that told me a lot as well. Right. I don't think he had an interest, a vested interest in telling anybody where she was. And trust me, if my husband gets up at four to get a flight, I'm not getting up. But in a few hours, if I can't find him, I don't know where he is, I haven't heard from him, then alarm bells are going to be sounding. So she, he obviously he obviously knew exactly where she was. And I get we're innocent until proven guilty, and, and I get that. But, you know, from a casual observer, as I am in this type of case, the evidence is mounting and mounting, and unless he owns a cleaning company, there's really no reason he'd be going out and buying $450 worth of cleaning supplies. So he kind of did everything wrong, and everything that is coming out in the media is just showing showing us more and more that the clock is ticking, and he's probably going to be charged very soon, as, as soon as they're finished their investigation enough to be able to charge him. Yeah, I would love to know what's going through his mind now. He's got to be sitting in a cell saying, he's just waiting. He's just waiting. He knows he might never see, uh, be free ever again. Our next comment comes from Kat. Kat says, at what point should a cashier be suspicious enough to inform the police? Some of the things these murderers are seeing buying are crazy, and yet no one ever calls the police. Now, you can't call someone uh, for buying cleaning supplies, okay? Can't do that. But here's what else CNN was reporting, that he actually bought those supplies with a black mask on and wearing blue surgical gloves. So again, the thing, it just continues to boggle the mind, David. And again, surveillance video, right? Home Depot's got it. They probably have like the HD camera like right in front of the guy's face as he buys that. Um, and it's, it's hard. It's hard for bystanders out there, especially in Home Depot when people come in and buy cleaning supplies. But it is important that everyone keep their eyes open. We are in a crazy world right now. And if you think there's a problem, say something. We could always, you know, figure it out after. Yeah, fair enough. And again, Brian Walsh, innocent to proven guilty. You made that great point, David. But again, we're all looking for justice for Anna. Hopefully, uh, she will be found. Um, the all Google right. searches, uh, they right. crush them. Mike. Yeah, no question. All right, thanks to Lexi Rigdon and David Bruno for being with us tonight. Always a real pleasure to have you guys on the show. Thanks again.